Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the class. If you could just give me some notice that you can see my screen, that you can hear me. You want to open the, the chat function and just say hello. Hi, Emma. Hello, Gurpreet. And just curious that uh, everything's going to go smoothly today. As I mentioned in, in a previous email, for some strange reason, I had to set up this class separately from all of the other classes. I have no idea why. Um, so when I arranged all these classes a long time ago, I scheduled them for every four weeks. It was automated. I didn't have to put them in individually. For some reason, it didn't put in September. So I had to create this class separately. Good to see that people saw that email, though, and were able to sign up. So hello, Selvaraja. Hello, Alara. Um, we'll just wait till we have a couple more people in here and then we, we might get started. As I mentioned in the email, today we will be having a look at task one for the general training module. Uh, if you're doing the academic module, of course, this won't be quite so relevant for you. But of course, at the same time, it's a good way to practice writing letters, uh, writing emails. I'm sure you'll have uh, to do that at some point in your life in English. So yeah, stick around if that's what you want to do. Bear in mind that all of this is being recorded as well. So you'll be able to watch the class back later. You'll be sent an email of the class recording. Um, that's the audio and the video and everything together. Uh, so as I was concerned about, we may have a few less people, fewer people today um, maybe because not everybody saw the email. I was hoping for a few more hellos. I can see that we have 18 people in here, but maybe some people are being a little bit shy, a little bit quiet. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, hopefully everybody can get involved a little bit later on. If anybody cannot see the screen okay, do let me know. Uh, hopefully everybody can see it fine. So let's get started. Um, so we've got this, uh, we've got this task in front of us here. As I say, it's task one general training. We're going to try and do two letters today. We might only finish with one and a half, but we're going to we're going to do our best to do two. We're going to plan it and then we're going to write it and we're going to start with this one here. So we have you have seen an advertisement in the local newspaper for swimming lessons at your community sports center. You want to find out more about these lessons. Write a letter to the manager of the sports center and in the letter. Describe how well you can swim at the moment. Explain why you want to learn to swim better and inquire about the time and cost of the swimming lessons. So just like with task two, we're going to approach this question with a sort of three step process here. The first step is to identify the, uh, the tone of the letter and also the purpose of the letter. So what type of letter do we think this is? Is this formal? Is it semi-formal? Is it informal? What do we think? Yeah, I mean, this one should be relatively clear. It should be a formal letter here. We're writing to a company, a company or an organization. Um, we don't know the name of the person that we're writing to. Uh, so a formal letter would seem to be the right approach. And um, what kind of purpose are we looking at here? What is this? Is this a complaint? Is this a thank you letter? Is this a, what, is, what are we looking at here? What might we call this? Good, find information. We could certainly say that. Essentially, it's a request. It's a request for information. So we're gonna call this a request letter. Um, so we've got a formal, letter and it's a request for information but there is an element of a um, supplying information as well we'll come to that a bit later but some of the instructions ask us to give information um, as well as ask for information so the next thing we want to do is to underline or highlight some of the keywords so can we find out what's what are some of the keywords here It's an advertisement. It's important maybe that we just reference this as we're going through. We have a local newspaper yet. Again, these are the kind of the key words that are not 
super important, but it's important that we reference them at least. Swimming lessons, absolutely key, of course. Good to see a few more people uh, making a contribution here. Hello, everybody. Uh, swimming lessons, yep. Anything else? Before we get to manager, I mean, where are these lessons? Are they, um, where, where are they at? Are they at a regular sports center? Are they at a, or a gym? They're at a community sports center. Good. And we want to find out more. I mean, essentially we, you know, we understand this, we'll, we'll put this in anyway. Um, I just ask everybody to make sure that your microphones and videos are switched off just to make this go a little bit more smoothly. I can see a couple of people's videos are on. Uh, it would just be helpful if everybody has them switched off. Uh, find out more yet. So find out more about these lessons. And well, yeah, so we write a letter to the manager. It's understandable. Maybe we'll write that in as well. So a lot going on here. And then with these, well, I, I tend to not underline or highlight the bullet point parts because they're very direct in what they're asking for. If you find it helpful to underline these parts, go ahead, absolutely fine. But these are very, very direct. There's not really much you can miss out on. If you've taken my task one general training course, you'll know what I think to do is, well, we'll talk about that now actually before I jump into this. And that is with regards to the structure of the plan. So we need to write a plan here. The first sentence, the first paragraph of a letter should essentially explain what the purpose for writing is. And then each paragraph subsequent to that is a case of filling in the bullet points, like uh, responding to the bullet point directive. So the first one is describe how well you can swim. In fact, let's leave that there. So we're just going to write one, two, three. And what we want from each of these bullet points is try to come up with just a couple of ideas. You might not use both. You might end up just using one. But if you come up with a couple of ideas, then you're not going to be stuck while you're writing, thinking of ideas. The ideas will be in front of you and you can just keep writing and writing and writing smoothly and you won't um, get stuck and which will cause you to run out of time. So let's think about that first one how well you can swim at the moment. Now, I could just write the paragraph saying, I can swim well. Here you go, Selvaraja has got an idea there already. We got beginner, a word like beginner. Um, so that's okay, but can we go a little bit further? I want to see some slightly technical vocabulary here. When we think about swimming, what components make up swimming? What components make up a good swimmer? What can they do? What can they not do? What, what, what can we talk about here? Can we come up with any swimming vocabulary or general sports vocabulary? What makes a person a beginner? What makes a person a, an amateur? What makes a person um, more of a semi-professional athlete? What have they got? For example, with football, it might be that they have great, great uh, uh, close control or they have great passing ability. Good, okay, so here's some words. We can barely float. What, so, so here's... Um, a really good opportunity to say something like, okay, floating devices. Right, so I wonder if anybody can come up with this here. I, I'm a beginner, so let's go with beginner. I know how to, anybody seen this term? It means to keep yourself afloat in the water when you're kind of kicking your legs, just to keep yourself afloat. Do you know what that's called? Yeah, this is the general training task one, Mohammed. yeah. So what this is called is treading water, treading water. So treading water is just keeping yourself afloat in one place. You're not swimming, but you know, you're just kind of moving yourself to keep yourself with your head above the water. So treading water is some really nice vocabulary that you could use. Anything else that we could talk about here? Beginner, you know how to tread water. Can we do any swimming at all? Can you think of any swimming styles? Any vocabulary for swimming styles that you know? Don't worry if not, because it's quite technical vocabulary. I can always help out. Freestyle. Interesting to go for freestyle. Uh, also butterfly. So uh, Srinivasan, that one's an interesting one because we've gone with beginner and then you've chosen one of the most 
probably the one of the most difficult swimming styles that you could have. So I personally wouldn't go with those. Maybe what most people learn at the very beginning is either breaststroke or front crawl or what kids often use is doggy, doggy paddle. We call it doggy paddle, but I'm going to just say front crawl. And we can say like a very basic front crawl. You know, we don't put our head underwater. We don't know how to do that yet. We don't know how to breathe underwater. So just a couple of ideas here. That's the main thing. Okay, let's move on to the second paragraph. Explain why you want to learn to swim better. What possible reasons might we have? I've been in this position myself before. fitness, curiosity, you want to exercise. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Let's go with fitness then. Let's go with fitness. Can we say uh, fitness or exercise? We'll just go with, probably use both of those words in the end. Now, obviously that's going to turn into a slightly small paragraph. We need to go a bit further. So let's use that sort of uh, five-year-old questioning technique. So you imagine a kid, he asks, why does this happen? You know, why is the sky blue? Well, A, B, C. And then you ask, well, why is that the case? Why is that the case? So just keep asking why. Why do we want to grow our fitness? Why do we want to exercise? What, what reason do we have for wanting to exercise? And then we can get a bit more content here. Immunize? Not sure what you mean by that. Maybe a bit. So, so Varija, that's nice. Stay fit, but if what we want to do here, there's there's a there's a risk that this is repetition or a tautology. So, staying fit is another way of just talking about fitness. What's the difference? Why do we want to be healthy? It could be that we recently had a health scare. Maybe we had, you know, we had to go to the doctor because we had, uh, you know, some heart pains or something like that. And that's why we want to do exercise now. Or it could just be that we want to lose weight because we are becoming obese. Maybe our doctor has recommended it. Lots of different options here. Uh, yeah, improving quality of life, Svetlana, as well. So just be careful of making sure that your reason is different for uh, then the thing that you are doing. You don't just wanna be repeating points here. That doesn't make sense to say, well, I want to get fit because I want to stay fit. That's like saying the same thing. Um, so lots of different options here, but that the important thing is that we have two ideas again. Now, uh, or it could be, yeah, as he's, you know, you could say love to be in the water as well. That might be a slightly, uh, that would be a different reason personally. I wouldn't use, I'd say I love to be in the water and then why I love to be in the water or I want to get fit because I had a health scare um, or I'd love to be in the water because I want to remove my water phobia, something like that. But if we focus on the fitness and exercise and then we have a reason for it, that'll be enough. Now, inquiring about the time and cost of the swimming lessons, this is the most basic paragraph. It really just requires you to paraphrase. You don't really, you know, you're not trying to think of any ideas here. You're just doing what they're telling you to do. You're just saying, I would like to ask about the schedule and the prices of the swimming lessons. There's not really much more you can say here. So just ask. And so that's what I mean by paraphrasing. Instead of time, you might say schedule. Instead of cost, you might say price, etc. Ask about lessons. We'll just leave that there. I think these two paragraphs along with the purpose sentence should be big enough, should be lengthy enough that we don't need to worry about a very long paragraph at the end. We should easily reach the 150 word minimum count. So there's our, there's our um, plan. Again, try not to take too long the plan. We take a bit longer here because we're all working together, but on the day, just make sure you've got uh, at least one, but ideally two points for each of those bullet points, but then you start with your purpose sentence. And that's what we're gonna start with here. So we're just going to say, de, uh, de, sorry, dear, dear sir, madam. And we have the comma, make sure you have the comma there, quite important. And then we start with a purpose sentence. Now the purpose sentence makes it very, this is one of the most important sentences in, in the letter. You want to make it very clear at the beginning why you are writing to 
whoever you're writing to. So how can we start a request letter, a request formal letter? Good, language like that is great. I am writing to, always a very excellent start. Notice here we've got no contraction. The I am rather than I'm. I am writing to inquire about, uh, yeah, we can do that. So I go with an E here, but I think the I, I need to look into this, but I think an I might just be an alternative spelling. I think they both work, but uh, I usually go with the E. So I'm writing to inquire about what? What are we asking about? Again, keep this simple. The purpose sentence, keep it simple, keep it direct. Exactly. Swimming lessons. If we want to paraphrase, we might say swimming classes, as someone, as Yuki says above. Just make sure you go pluralize it as well, because that is a countable noun. So we can say swimming classes or swimming lessons. Both of the words work about swimming classes um, at, we can say, at your sports center. Okay, and look at the keywords above. What more information could we include here? Look at the highlighted words. Think how we could end this sentence. Yeah, we wanna talk about where we found them. How can we do that? What language can we use to introduce where we found these lessons. Maybe we can turn this. You could use a relative clause. This is good, Svetlana, yeah. So we've got this noun here and I wanna turn that into a verb ideally. So what we can do is we say as advertised and then we say where it was advertised. So I'm writing to inquire about swimming classes at your local sports center. Well, now, now that we've done this, now we've made it more specific, we can then go back and add a definite article because we're now talking about specific swimming classes, about the swimming classes at your sports center as advertised in, um, now we wouldn't, we wouldn't say the local paper, Maybe we could come up with a name of the local paper. Usually they want to know which paper it was advertised in. So we just got to come up with some random, you know, um, invented paper. Let's say, you know, the Manchester Sun, Globe, whatever. But notice what I'm doing here as well. Think about the punctuation. When we have a publication, we capitalize the, uh, we capitalize the words. So the Manchester Globe, but it could be whatever you, whatever you want to invent there. Okay, so dear sir, madame, I'm writing to inquire about the swimming classes at your sports center as advertised in the Manchester Globe. The one thing that I would maybe want to improve on, I mean, it's arguable this, inquire about really does mean ask for information about. So you don't have to write the word information. You don't have to write the word details, but if you wanted to be extra safe, you could say, I am writing to, remember the type of letter it is, I am writing to request details regarding something like that. So this is fine. I don't really think this would have any problems at all, but if you wanted to be on the extra safe side to be, yes, this is the purpose, it's a request letter. You could write request details regarding the swimming classes at your sports center as advertised in the Manchester Globe. Okay, but both are absolutely fine, I think. Okay, now we want to, do we have to mention specific sports center name? Well, what happens here, and you'll notice that I have the um, possessive pronoun your. So we don't need it because the person to whom we are writing knows which sports center it is. It's not really like the examiner has to know because it's not for the examiner, it's for the person to whom we are writing. They know which sports center it is. And so we don't need to add that information in. If you do add it in, it's not a problem but because of that possessive pronoun, you don't actually need it. Okay, now let's come into the first paragraph, first main paragraph. We want to describe how well you can swim at the moment. Now, this is one of the advantages actually of sometimes including keywords. Something we, do, we talked about here, it's fine. All of this, this is great, how well we can swim, but none of this was this idea of at the moment. So we can cover this uh, directive in just a couple of words. And I would put it at the very beginning of the paragraph. 
we often use time references at the beginning of paragraphs, don't we? We say things like in recent years or over the past few years or in the future and, and et cetera. So what kind of time reference could we use at the very beginning here to suggest we're talking about at the moment? Something formal. So as for now, sounds to me not quite formal enough. These days, you know, it, it would be okay. We've seen a lot of this. We see a lot of this in essays, right? Like these days, nowadays, et cetera. It sounds a bit more uh, general. I wanna make it a bit more personal. Here's one we could use, at something. At present, good, at present. This has this nice formal sound to it. And just like all of those other cohesive devices, we follow it up with a comma. Uh, presently could also actually be okay, Neil. Yeah, and I think that's fine. So we'll go with that present, at present. Um, now, how can we write about being a beginner? This is where we need to get into the meat of the letter. Any ideas? Think about the prepositions that you would use with the word beginner. Are you in beginner? Are you of beginner? Are you at beginner? Are you, what would you use? You could just say, I am a beginner. At present, I am a beginner. But if you want to develop the language a little bit more, you would use maybe the, the noun level and a, pre, and, a, and a preposition. So what I mean is this, at present, I am at a beginner level. So it's okay to write, I am a beginner, but if you want to develop a little bit more, you just need to think about how you can build on that language. So you, you do you use at with level? You don't really use at with beginner, but you do use at with level. So I am at a beginner level. Um, and now how can we, what sort of language could we use here if we wanted to go on to explain what we mean, to give a little bit more information? There is a witch in here. There's a bit more to it though. Good, there is a buy too. Yeah, we're getting there. In fact, the I is just I, so you just got one more or two more words. By which I'm... Good, 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 good. By which I mean. So we use this piece of this sort of... Um, construction to just give a bit more information about what we mean. So at present, I am at a beginner level. Um, uh, so maybe we'll use the word swimming in here somewhere as well. I am I'm at a beginner level, maybe when it comes to swimming, or maybe with regard to swimming, by which I mean that I am able to, and then we talk about the skills that we currently have or that we lack. So I am able to, what was that expression here? Tread water. Notice the spelling here for um, those who, just like me, find English incredibly frustrating when it comes to the inconsistency of letters and the sounds that they make. That looks a little bit like treed because we have read, of course, but the pronunciation is actually tread, to tread water. So by which I mean that I am able to tread water for, and then we can give a bit of, bit of time for, um, let's say five to 10 minutes. And I can, what else can we do? Now I want to talk about this. How can we write about front crawl? What verb would you use? This is a trickier one. Good Svelana, that's exactly the verb I wanted to see. And I can perform, I can perform front crawl, let's say with a, and here I'm gonna use that adjective, with a basic dig
degree of, can anybody think of the word I'm going to use here? That you could use the word confidence, but it's not actually the one I was thinking. Competence, competence. So close there with competency. Competence, <laughs> again, it's be, you'd be hard pressed to uh, talk about the difference between competency and competence, but certainly competence is far more common as a word. So uh, let's have a look at that back. At present, I'm at a beginner level with regard to swimming, by which I mean that I am able to tread water for five to 10 minutes and I can perform front crawl with a basic degree of competence. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, and notice it's all one sentence as well. We're showing our ability to develop something a little bit more complex in terms of the construction. Uh, and with a basic degree of competence, let's say, however, what can we not do? What's like the maximum time that we can swim for? Maybe we could come up with an idea. That's, that's quite a lot, I would say, Shrikant, for, for a beginner to, to swim for an hour, um, just based on my experience. Otherwise, <laughs> I feel like I'm an absolutely terrible swimmer. And I'm, to be fair, I'm not a great swimmer. Um, yeah, maybe we could say 10 minutes, Angu. Let's say, uh, however, I cannot swim for more than, notice we bring comparatives in here as well, although it's a noun rather than an adjective. However, I cannot sw swim for more than 10 minutes. And here's an expression I want you to come up with, A-A-T. Just mean in one go. At a time, at a time. That's what we want here, at a time. So to mean at, uh, you know, in one go, at a time. However, I cannot swim for more than 10 minutes at a time. So this is sort of saying what we can do and what we cannot do. Instead of just saying we're at a beginner level, we're giving more details regarding that stage because some people might say they're a beginner and another person, so one person might say they're a beginner, another person might also say they're a beginner and have totally different skill sets. So it's important to be a bit more specific. And also just because we wanna develop the paragraph, we wanna show our ability to use a range of vocabulary when it comes to swimming. Notice what we've got here, we've got tread water, we've got perform front crawl, and then we've got basic skill language as well, like basic degree of competence. This final sentence, it doesn't contain that much great vocabulary, but notice that, you know, in terms of the cohesion of the paragraph, it fits within this paragraph. So you're showing your ability to write paragraphs appropriately as well. You're using an appropriate cohesive device with however. So there's lots going in uh, to this particular paragraph, as basic as it may look. Okay, let's move on to the second one. And we're going to explain why you want to learn to swim better. How can we begin a paragraph talking about a reason for something, a personal motivation? We'll keep it this relatively basic. There, there, there isn't really or at least at the moment, I cannot think of one, there is not really a particular cohesive device. You could do Svetlana, that would be fine. It's not part of the directives is the only thing. If it was ask for a, for a performance assessment, that's great, we would definitely put it in. There's no problem with including that, like you're saying. Um, that would be okay, but you won't be penalized for not including it because you're not asked to actually do that. So good idea and definitely include it if you want to, but you won't be penalized for not including it is what I would say to that. Um, now, I don't think we need to having said that because that makes it sound that we're going in a different direction, like an opposite direction. We're just moving on to a completely different point and well, completely different point, but we are, we can just go with something like this. 
the main reason for this um, I can't feel here in lessons is that what word could we use here? Interest, good. The main reason for this interest in lessons is that, um, why? Have a look at the, the content that we've got in the plan. You can always change the order, by the way. You might talk about the health scare first and fitness second, or you could do it the other way around. It depends on how you construct the sentence. that I wanted to be healthy. Is there a reason for the past tense there? Because notice that we still want to be healthy. Although I want to be healthy, maybe seen a slightly basic vocabulary here. I think we could build on that a little bit, but nice idea, Sashin. Anybody else wanna have a go? Otherwise I'm going to see if I can full body exercise. So these are all points, but nothing really that we can put into a sentence yet. So, okay, let's have a think about this. The main reason for this interest in lessons is that, okay, what we could do here is move clauses around a little bit. Is that I, okay, no, actually, it can make my body fit. Okay. I need to improve my fitness with, uh, let's say, a strict exercise rage again i'm just trying to build in some nice vocabulary here good regime good voc uh, good spelling as well i need to improve my fitness with a strict exercise regime um, now we can talk about the reason why we need to do that and the nice transitional vocabulary here What might I be going for here? This means because, essentially. Close, Yuki, close. Not as a reason of, but as a... Yes, Salvarija, good. That's okay, a lot coming in at the same time here. Yeah, basically we want results, as a result of. So I want to improve my fitness as a result of having recently had a health scare, having recently been told by a doctor that I needed to improve my fitness or something like that, okay? So we use as a result of to talk about the link between cause and, uh, and results. So the main reason for this interest in lessons is that I need to improve my fitness with a strict exercise regime as a result of having recently had a health scare. Okay, now I don't want to overdo this sentence. I'm gonna end that sentence here. Um, this, this part is probably quite confusing in terms of the grammar. Just notice that basically we're just using the present perfect, but we have to use the ing after a preposition here. So I have recently had a health scare, just I have. So that makes sense, doesn't it? I have recently have. So we're just using the ing here because we're following off this preposition. That's all it is. It's less complicated than it looks. So of recent, having recently had a health scare, and now let's be a bit more specific. What's a cohesive device that we could use? What's say an adverb that we could use that uh, we use at the beginning of a sentence to suggest we're going to be more specific? The key is in the word specific. <laughs> Specifically. That's what I was going for here. So we're trying to be specific about what the health scare was. Notice the transition is very natural. We finish with health scare. So we use the adverb specifically 
to reference back to that health scare. So as you're reading this, everything becomes very cohesive. You don't have to keep going back and wondering how everything links up in the sentence. That's the idea of coherence and cohesion. So as a result of having recently had a health scare, specifically, okay, we haven't got this in the plan. So this is you kind of making things up on the fly, but that's fine. What health scare did we have? What was the problem that we had? Lots of different things you could say. Diabetes would feel like less of a scare. A scarce is sort of this sudden thing rather than a condition. So Svetlana, I will use that. That's definitely good language. I'm going to use that in a minute. But first of all, I just want to think about um, this health scare. A muscle strain could be. I wouldn't imagine that a muscle strain would mean, mean you need to improve your fitness, though. I'm really thinking about, yeah, maybe something to do with your weight or something to do with your heart. Or you, ideally, something that co uh, combines the two. So specifically, I uh, was having... Um, chest pains, we could say something like that, because that's related to the heart. So I was having chest pains, and let's say, and my doctor recommended. Uh, okay, now, <laughs> I want to give you a bit of a challenge here, because a lot of people make mistakes when it comes to the verb recommend. So let's use the recommend verb. And I want to follow it with the verb go. How do you link it together? Do we use a preposition to? Do we, do we take out a to? Do we use an ing? Going, okay. Okay, recommended going. That would work, that would work. What if I, what if I do this? What about he recommended that? Oh, I don't wanna give it away, but he says that I, must do something. Okay, so there are there are a couple of options here, as you can see. Recommended me to go, or you could say recommended that I go. So there are a couple. I think this is why I often see mistakes with the verb recommend is because there's lots of different ways. There is about three different ways of uh, creating a verb pattern here. So recommended me to go, he recommended going, he recommended that I go. Uh, and then we can add to, let's say to the pool. What did Svetlana add earlier? Let me just have a look back up here. Recommended that I needed to improve my stamina, um, improve my breathing. So recommended that I go swimming, or let's say, or that I begin a swimming program to improve my, um, Okay, what does CV stand for? Good, but careful with the spelling, Shrikant. That's better there with an A there. So my cardiovascular health, which obviously links back because we were talking about chest pains, it's related to the heart. Notice that the coherence and cohesion is not just due to the general um, meanings of the sentences, but also the vocabulary, We're kind of linking things together here. So specifically, I was having chest pains, and my doctor recommended that I begin a swimming program to improve my cardiovascular health. Great, everything's linking together very nicely. Let's move into that final paragraph here, where we are inquiring about the time and cost of the swimming lessons. Now here is where I want to use some more specific vocabulary or a specific, uh, let's say, segment of vocabulary or sort of section, a uh, sequence of words. Okay, Vera, no worries. You will be sent the um, lesson afterwards. So we shall see you hopefully in the next in the next class. Okay, Svetlana. Therefore, therefore, that's okay. It sounds a bit too much to me, like an essay with the words therefore. That might just be a personal preference, um, but yeah, it seems to be almost a little bit too academic. Additionally, also doesn't really work for me because additionally makes it sound like we're continuing to talk about the reason. Um, so is a little bit not really formal enough. Basically, 
I don't want to use a cohesive device here. It doesn't really feel like a time to use a cohesive device. I want to jump straight into asking about the, about the cost in swimming. It's not really a conclusion either. Again, to conclude would be for an essay, not for a letter, because this is not a conclusion. We're just, uh, I would, I would what? I would what? There is some vocabulary in the task one course. I have written this down for request letters. Okay, I can kindly ask. I would, uh, I, let's say I, let's say I would kindly, I, I would kindly request. Sounds okay. Basically the best one we want here, or one of the best options here is the one that I put in the, in the task one course. I would be grateful if you could, now notice what this is doing here as well. Not only are you including some really nice letter vocabulary, specifically for formal letters, but you've suddenly included a conditional sentence as well. I would be grateful if you could. So, you know, you're, you're, you're doing uh, multiple things at once. What do we want them to do? I would be grateful if you could what? Oh, enlighten me. Enlighten seems a bit too heavy. It's a little bit too almost philosophical sounding. Inform, inform is a really good verb here. I would be grateful if you could inform me. What's the preposition that follows this? Inform me about, could it work about? Inform me regarding, on, of is what, it's hard to say why with prepositions, isn't it? But of is uh, what sounds to me the most natural. I would be grateful if you could inform me of what? It really depends on what you're following it with, really. Of Now, keep in mind the, do we want articles here? Do we want some articles? Good, we do want a definite article here because this is, this is gonna turn into a the noun of noun unit of language. The schedule of the lessons, the schedule and cost, or we won't use the word cost. What's another word for cost? Oh no, we've already seen it. I think Jing Zong put it up there. Price, the schedule and price of, now we could say the, could we be a bit more specific than the, could we add two letters onto the end of this article? Now that we've re referenced them once already. not those, but close, we just want an E, a these. So we, as a general rule, Svetlana, those is unlikely to be used in writing because most of the time, uh, these is going to be the correct choice because the, the ideas that we have in mind are close to us. It's very hard to talk about this as it's more conceptual, but we usually writing these, those is quite rare when we're writing, that goes for letters, that goes for essays, uh, but usually we wanna write these. I would be grateful if you could inform me of the schedule and price of these swimming lessons. Why? What are we hoping to do? It's not a trick question, quite a simple answer. Okay, da 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 da. Good, I would like to start as soon as possible. Make sure when you're writing a formal letter that you do write as soon as possible. Another option in the near future, either of those are fine. Um, but yeah, try to write, try to avoid acronyms if you can. So here is where we wanna use that transitional language. Svetlana has written an as, that's fine, that's fine. We could also go with a so that I, and then we take out the would, and we can go so that I may start. And I wanna take out this verb start. Could we, be, could we go for something else instead? Think about what do you do with lessons? Yes, you start them, but what do you have to do before you start them? You have to give some information over. What, is, what verb could we use for that? Maybe a phrasal verb. Enroll sounds a bit more academic to me, but you maybe could use enroll. Register would be better or sign up. 
feels like the most um, natural one for swimming lessons. But yeah, either of those is fine. So I would be grateful if you can inform me of the schedule and price of these swimming lessons so that I may sign up in the near future. As I said, this was very direct. We're literally just aren't, we're uh, directly responding to that directive. We're not including any new information. We're just showing the range of vocabulary that we've got with this particular paragraph. We don't need to add anything more than that. So let's have a quick look at the word count. There you go, 152, you're already there. I would just finish with a polite ending. It's nice and simple. Thank you for your couple of different words you could choose here. You could go with help. You could go with, what's the other word you could choose? Cooperation. I was thinking one beginning with A. Attention, thank you for your time. Thank you for, wouldn't be thank you for your concern. Um, that would be if you were responding to somebody else who was asking about you. Um, the one that I was going for was this one. Thank you for your assistance. But lots of, all of those uh, words are possible, help, assistance, attention, cooperation, they're all great. So whatever you prefer here. How would you end it? How would you end the letter? Yours sincerely. This is almost always true for a formal letter, as in, no, it's always true from a formal letter. You can always add it. But with some formal letters, you can get away with a best regards or a with regards. And I think this is one of those kind of letters, to be honest, it's a community pool. It's not very, it's not like a very serious letter. Uh, you're just requesting some information. So if you were to write with regards, that would also be okay, I think. Um, maybe not the, uh, the case of Svetlana, unless you, you know, really want to make friends with the, um, with the manager there. But uh, yeah, yours sincerely would, would do well. So, and then we just add our names um, that we can just use. Uh, I'll make sure here that you finish with your name. Let's, uh, in fact, let's be more formal. We'll go with a Robert um, and then a Harris. So yes, exactly, Selvarija. So if there is, if there is, oh no, you've got this the wrong way. No, wait, have I, yours is, hold on, hold on. I'm just having, I'm, I'm having a senior moment. Um, yours, so sir, madame would be yours sincerely. And then with the name, yours faithfully. Yes, you are right. You know, when you just completely blank out for a moment, I think you're right. Yes, yeah, so with the, without the name, we want a yours faithfully. And with, when you do have the name, you have the yours sincerely. Okay, now that brings us to a close on this particular letter. Does anybody have any questions on this formal letter? If not, then we'll move on, see how much we can get done on, a, in, on an informal letter. Doesn't look like we have any questions, that's great. So let's go over and see what we can get done on this particular letter here. I shouldn't have said it's an informal letter because now I've given something away. But anyway, let's read this out. We have, you recently went to a public, no full stop at the, oh, so you wouldn't have a full stop. Did I write a full stop? No, I didn't. Yeah, there won't be any full stop at the end of the name. You never write a full stop at the end of a name, no punctuation with the name, just use the capital letters, that's all. Um, so you recently went to a public event, for example, an exhibition, a festival or a show that you think your friend would enjoy. Write a letter to your friend in your letter, tell your friend what the event was, explain why you think your friend would like the event, and invite, invite them to come to the, uh, to the event with you. Um, what did I, after and, hold on, give me a second. Where's the and? No, come after and. I can't see a comma <laughs> after and. It's in the second paragraph. I don't know what you mean. Okay, I can't see, I can't see a comma after and. Anywhere here. Are you sure, Sanjitha? Five to ten minutes and. 
Oh, here. Oh, you're saying to include a comma. That's it. So this is one of those areas where you can have one or you can choose to leave it out. Um, basically, when you've got a new subject, often, but not always, you can add a comma, but these are one of those, it really doesn't matter. They're not important, these commas. Notice as well that the subject is exactly the same. It's I and it's I again. So it does, it's really unimportant, something like that. I get that you're asking the question, it's right to ask the question, but do not worry about commas like that. Do not worry about commas next to ands, about uh, commas next to coordinating conjunctions. Sometimes they can help to increase clarity, but they are nothing to get too worked up about. Okay, now let's come to this one here. Right, so I've just read it out. So let's uh, consider the keywords here. What are some of the keywords? You have a public event. I'm just gonna put all of that in the, in the bold here. It doesn't have to be an exhibition, by the way. It doesn't have to be an exhibition, a festival or a show. They're just giving you a few ideas. I think they're just trying to help you understand what we mean by a public event. Um, your friend, this gives away what kind of letter we should be writing, uh, would enjoy, absolutely. Yes, the recently, I'm glad somebody pointed out the recently. It's important that we make reference to this in the letter. Um, and then, we, you know, what the event was, why they would like the event, invite them to come to the event with you. We'll leave that all there. Okay, this is an interesting one, particularly because of some of the examples that they choose. I'll explain why I think it's interesting in a moment. First of all, what type of letter is this? What's the tone? It's an informal letter, absolutely. And what is the general purpose of this letter? There's a couple of things going on. Yeah, it's an invitation, it's information. It's also recommendation as well. So it doesn't really matter what you write here. It's just that writing these things down, invitation, information, recommendation, it just helps you to stay ground it in the letter. It just helps you to uh, acknowledge what the purpose is so that you don't go off and talk about things unrelated to the letter. And you'll be able to use vocabulary that's appropriate for the purpose. So again, we're gonna have that purpose letter, purpose sentence. Not always important for an informal letter, by the way. Um, and sometimes instead of a purpose, it can just be, well, we start sometimes with just a greeting. I think that's what we're going to do here. You know, how are you? How's everything going? Et cetera, et cetera. And then we move on to the purpose. And to be honest, we can combine that with what the event was, because when we explain what we're doing, that's naturally going to be what the event was. You can't avoid those. So we're just going to start with one, then we'll move into two, then we'll move into three. So let's have some ideas. What was the event? What shall we talk about? You can choose one of these, or we can choose a different public event. The Chelsea Flower Show. That's an interesting choice. Yeah. Uh, cinema movie. I wouldn't They say this is this is key here, Selvaraja. So a cinema movie is not a public event. A public event would be more it's held once a year or maybe. Yeah, it's held once uh, once a year or maybe it's on for a short period of time over a period of weeks. Movies are not quite the same idea. Uh, concert or festivals. Yes. DJ shows, yes, these are all more like public events. Christmas, less so. Christmas is a public holiday, not a public event, because Christmas can be very private. Uh, it can be public too, but it's not a public event. Uh, an exhibition in the British Museum is, you know, a public event. So we can, let's go with that. Let's go with an exhibition in the British Museum. And I'll tell you why I think um, an exhibition in the British Museum is a better idea. And this is this plays back into why this is interesting. Notice the directions here. We went to this public event. 
but we also want to invite them to come to the event with you. If the event is a concert, that concert usually is not happening again. It's, it happens once. Imagine that a band comes to your city, they play, they move on. That's it. So there's no way to invite them to come to the event with you. If it's a festival, it might take place once a year. But again, that's a long time away. It's a festival you'd have to wait for a year for them to come back. With an exhibition, these take place over a period of weeks or even months sometimes. So it makes sense to invite them to come with you. I'm not sure whether the examiners have taken that into account when they've created this task, but it is something to consider um, in this particular task. So I think exhibition is the best one to go for here. Okay, so now tell me, what was the exhibition on? What was it about? Some ideas. Traditional crafts, technology, historical events. If it's an exhibition, it's probably going to need to be more specific than that. So it might be something like technology in the 1800s, technology of the Aztec period, technology uh, in Roman society or whatever it might be. Um, Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel, things like that, something quite specific. Um, green technology. OK. Yeah, all right. That one might be easiest to think about green technology. Um, but this is a tricky one to write because each of you are going to have different interests and uh, you're going to have different ideas. You're going to have different knowledge, like um, let's say technical knowledge about different things. So I think this one might be quite tricky to write together. I'm just going to write the green technology here because I feel like that's something that more people will know about. Uh, but it could be about Bitcoin, it could be about women in the Greek myths, it could be about uh, education in uh, prehistoric society, you know, whatever it might be. Now, why would the friend like the event? Now consider here that we're in an informal letter. Let's say, okay, there is there an engineer. That's a good idea. That's a nice idea. He's an engineer. And if it's about green technology, what are they passionate about? He's an agriculturist. He's an environmentalist, maybe. Passionate about the environment. Passionate about conservation. You know, considering some of the vocabulary we could use here. And then if you can think of it, just add a couple of like, in, like one or two idioms that might be useful for recommendation okay so it could be something like i think this would be i'm sure a lot of you have heard this before it will be just your cup of tea maybe that one's a little bit too common you know everybody knows it's your cup of tea but i like this one it's right up your what street good so when it comes to informal letters suddenly idioms can be everywhere uh, we, we use idioms a lot when we're talking and essentially with an informal letter, you're trying to create a letter that can be spoken. So, you know, this sort of thing is right up your street. Invite them to come to the event with you. How can we do that? What sort of details can we give them? When could it be? Where is it? Well, we know where it is, the British Museum. But maybe give me a date. Again, something casual. So yeah, maybe be next week. It'll be a little bit more specific than next week, maybe one evening next week. Um, and then maybe talk about the museum is open until, if it's gonna be the evening, we wanna know how late we can go. It's open until, and then we come up with something like, I don't know, 8 p.m. or whatever you think is best. But these are the sort of details. Um, these are the sort of details that we need to include. Okay, Amar, that's, um, that, that's fine. I've noticed that time is three o'clock. 
I will have to cut this short here. I, I know that it would have been nice to be able to complete this one, but we do have a plan. So I'd recommend that people have a little go with this letter here. You have some ideas. As I said, with this particular letter, it is actually going to be quite hard to write because not everyone's going to have the same interests. I want you to go away and write this letter with whatever most interests you. If you went to an exhibition, what would you find most interesting? Um, because then you'll be able to use vocabulary that you know, uh, and then the letter will be better as a result of it, okay? Yet the recording of the session will be available afterwards. I'll be able to send everybody a recording afterwards. Uh, it would have been nice to be able to get through this one, but we did spend a little bit longer with this one. Um, as I said, these are free classes, so hopefully you found it useful anyway. Does anybody have any questions before we before we go? And yes, Angu, you can give a day. That's absolutely fine. The previous recordings. So basically, you count with the previous recordings. If you want to send me an email asking for them, you can, but there are not many because I don't have paid for. Uh, well, actually, I do. I do pay for some storage. Uh, for this, but I have the I have the most basic Zoom package, so I don't have enough storage to store many of the recordings because they're such large files. So there are not many there. So the idea is that you sign up, and then you're sent the recordings afterwards, and then you can keep them on your hard drive. If you send, I can't, I won't be right, right, writing that down. If you guys can just email me them, but it's only about two or three classes. So if you were at the last two or three classes, you will have all of the previous recordings. Um, so if you still feel like you need them, send me an email and I can send them. Anybody else have any questions? If it's anything related to IELTS, it may be better to use the Q&A. Is it mandatory to use idioms for informal letters? N not at all. It's not mandatory whatsoever, but it can help. It's basically just using the language that you believe is most natural um, in speech. Uh, can I write this letter in QA? What, f finishing it off, do you mean? I can have a go. We'll see. I'll, I'll see if I can work on that later today. There's a lot going on at the moment. Um, currently working on a best man speech for my brother's wedding coming up very soon. So if I can get that out the way, I will, I'll also finish off this letter. But I can't make any promises, but I'll, I'll try and I'll try and fit this in as well. OK. All right. Let's leave that there, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, remember to sign up for the uh, thank you. I'll pass on the congratulations. Um, I'll pass. Yeah. And then October's class, I believe, is going to be October. Is it the 7th or 8th or something? Remember, it's the first Thursday of October. And um, yeah, that the sign up link to that is in the bonus classes. Everything is normal with the with the class in October. Uh, OK, everybody have an awesome September and um, yeah, I'll see you in October. Uh, if I can, there we go.